From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, host of theCUBE here in our Palo Alto office for remote interviews during this time of COVID-19. We're here with the quarantine crew here in our studio. We've got a great guest here from Google, Will Granis, Managing Director, Head of the Office of the CTO with Google Cloud. Um, thanks for coming on, Will, appreciate uh, you, you spend some time with me. Oh, John, it's great to be with you. And as you said, in these times, more important than ever to stay connected. Yeah, and I'm really glad you came on because a couple of things. One, congratulations uh, to Google Cloud for the success you guys had. Saw a lot of big wins under your belt, both on the momentum side, on the business side, but also on the technical side. Meet is available now for folks. Um, Anthos is doing very, very well. Partner Ecosystems developing. Got some nice use cases in vertical markets I want to get in and unpack with you. But really the bigger story here is that um, the world has seen the future before it was ready for it. And that is the at scale challenge that the COVID-19 has shown everyone. We're seeing, you know, the future has been pulled forward. We're living in a virtualized environment. It's funny to say that virtualization uh, is a <laughs> server virtualization is a tech term, but that enabled a lot of things. We're living in a virtualized world now because we have to, but this is going to set in motion a series of new realities that you guys have been experiencing and, and supporting for many, many years. But now as a provider of Google Cloud, you guys have to operate at scale you have. And now the whole world realizes that scale is a big deal. And so you guys have had some successes. I want to get your thoughts on the, this at scale problem that the world now realizes. I mean, everyone's at home. That's a disruption that was unforecasted, whether it's under provisioning VPNs in IT to um, a surface area for security to just work and play and, and activities are now confined. So people aren't convening anymore and, and it's a, a huge issue. What's your take on all this? Well, I mean, to your point uh, just now, the fact that we can have this conversation and we can have it fluidly um, from our respective uh, remote locations just goes to show you the power of information technology that underlies so many of the things that we do today. And uh, for Google Cloud, this is not a new thing. And for Google, this is not a new thing. For Google Cloud, we had a mission of trying to help companies accelerate uh, their transformation and enable them in these new digital environments. And so many companies that we've been working with have already been on the path to operating in environments that are digital, that are fluid. And when you think about the cloud, that's one of the great benefits of the cloud is that uh, that scalability can come with the business demand and it also helps the scale situation without having to you know, do the typical Oh, we need to find the procurement people. We need to find the server vendors. We need to get the storage lined up. It really allows a much more fluid uh, response to unexpected and unforecasted situations, whether that's customer demand or, you know, in this case, a uh, global pandemic. Yeah, one of the things I want to get in with you, I want to get you to have, explain what your job is there because obviously Google's got a new CEO now for over a year, Thomas Kurian, came from uh, Oracle, knows the enterprise up and down. You had Diane Green before that. Again, another enterprise leader. Google Cloud has essentially rebuilt itself from the original Google Cloud to be very enterprise centric. You guys have great momentum. And, and this is a world where cloud native is going to be required. I mean, everyone now sees it. The, the tide has been pulled out, everything's exposed, all the gaps uh, in business from a tech standpoint, it's kind of exposed. And so the smart managers and companies are looking at things and saying, double down on that, let's kill that. We don't want to pay that supplier. They're not core to our business. This is going to be a very rapid acceleration of what I call a vetting of the new, the new set of, of players that are going to emerge because the folks who don't adapt to this new cloud native reality, whether it's app workloads for banking to whatever, are going to have to have to reinvent themselves now and reset and tweak to come out of this crisis. So it's going to be very cloud native. This is a big deal. Can you share your, your reaction to that? Yeah, absolutely. And so as you pointed out, uh, there are kind of two uh, worlds that exist right now. Companies that are moving to become more digital and uh, transform. And you mentioned the momentum. I mean, in Google Cloud, just over the last year, greater than 50% revenue growth and uh, you know, on a greater than $10 billion run rate business and adding customers at a really quick clip 
uh, you know, including, you know, just yesterday, Splunk and, you know, along the way, um, Telecom Italia, Major League Baseball, Vodafone, um, Lowe's, Wayfair, um, Activision, Blizzard. So this is not, uh, you know, this transformation and this digitization is not just for, you know, a few or just for any one industry. It's happening across the board. And then you add that to the implementations that have been happening across you know, uh, Shopify and the Spotify and HSBC, which was a early customer of ours in the cloud, and it you know already has a little bit of a head start into this transformation. And so you see these new companies coming in and seeing the value of digital transformation, and then these other companies that have kind of lit the path for others to consider. And you know, Shopify is a really good example of how seeing you know drastic uptick in demand, they're able to respond and keep you know roughly half a million shops up and running, uh, you know, during a period of time where uh, many retailers are trying to figure out how to stay online or even get online. Well, what is your role at Google? I see you're the managing director, title is managing director, head of the office of the CTO. We've seen these roles before, you know, head of the CTO, you obviously technical role. Um, uh, is it partnering with the CEO on strategy? Is it you kick tire kicking new things? Are you overseeing any strategic initiatives? What is what is your role? So a little bit of all of those things combined into one. So I, I spent the first couple of decades of my career on the other side of the fence in the non-tech you know, community uh, in the enterprise where we were still building technology and we were still you know, digitally minded, um, but not the way that uh, people view technology in Silicon Valley. And so you know, spending a couple of decades in that environment really gave me uh, insights into how to take technology and apply them to a specific problem. And when I came to Google five years ago, you know, selfishly it was because I knew the potential of Google's technology having been on the other side. And I was really interested in forming a better bridge between Google's technology and people like me who were CTOs of public companies and really wanted to leverage that technology for yeah. problems that I was solving, whether it was aerospace, public sector, manufacturing, uh, what have you. And so. It's been great. It's the, it's the role of a lifetime. I've been able to build the team that I wanted as an enterprise technologist for decades yeah. and the entire span of technologies at our disposal. And we do two things. One is we help our most strategic customers accelerate their path to the cloud. And two, we create these signals by working with the top uh, companies moving to the cloud and digitally transforming. We learn so much, uh, John, about what uh, we need to build as an organization. So it also helps balance out the Google-driven innovation with our customer-driven innovation. Yeah, and I could I can attest, I've been watching you guys from the from day one, um, hired a lot of great enterprise people that I personally know. So you get in the enterprise chops and staff and you get, you're seeing some progress. Uh, I have to ask you though, because I'm, first of all, a big fan of Google at the scale from knowing them from when they were just a little search engine to what they are now. The, the, there was an expression a few years ago I heard from enterprise customers, it was, goes along the lines like this. I want to be like Google, because you guys had a great network, you had large scale, you had all these things that were like awesome. And then they realized, well, we can't be like Google. We don't have SREs, we don't have large scale data centers. So there was a, a little bit of a translation and I want to say a little bit of a overplay of the Google hand and you guys had since realized that you didn't, it wasn't just people going to bang to your doorstep and be, adopting Google Cloud because there was a little bit of a cultural disconnect from wanting to be like Google, then leveraging Google in their business as they transform. So as you guys have moved from that, what's changed? They still want to be like Google in the sense you have great security, you got a great network, and you got that scale. Enterprises are a little bit slower to adopt that, which you're focused on now. What is the, the story there? Because I think that's kind of the theme that I'm hearing. Okay, Google now understands me. They know I'm not as fast as Google. They got super great people. <laughs> we are training our people. We're treat, you know, re retraining them. This is the transformation that they're going through. So you might be a little bit ahead of them certainly, but now they need to level up. How do you respond to that? Well, a lot of this is the transformation that Thomas has been enacting you know, over the last uh, year plus. And it comes in kind of three very operational or tactical uh, you know, pillars that I think of. First, we expanded our customer and we continue to expand our customer facing teams, you know, three times what they were before um, because we need to be there. We need to be in those situations. We need to hear from the customer. We need to learn uh, more about the problems they're trying to solve. So we don't just take a, 
theoretical principle and try to overlay it onto a problem, we actually get very visceral understanding of what we're trying to solve. But you have to be there uh, to gain that empathy and that understanding. And so one is showing up, and that you know has been mobilizing a much larger engine of customer-facing uh, personnel from Google. Uh, second, it's also been uh, really important that we evolve our own. You know, just as Google brought uh, SRE principles and principles of distributed systems and software design out to the world, we also had a little bit to learn about uh, transitioning from typical customer support and moving to more customer experience. So you've seen you know, that evolution under uh, Thomas as well with cloud changing, you know, moving from talking about support to talking about customer experience, that white glove experience that our customers get, and our partners get from the beginning of their journey with us all the way through. And then finally, making sure that our product roadmap has the solutions that are relevant across uh, key priority industries for us. And you know that's, again, that only comes from being present, from having a focus uh, in those industries and then developing the uh, solutions that uh, progress those companies. So again, not this isn't about taking you know, a principle and trying to apply it uh, blindly. This is about adding that connection, that really deep connection to our customers and our partners and letting that connection manifest the things that we have to do as a product company to best support them over you know, a long period of time. I mean, look at some of these um, deals we've been announcing. These are 10 year, five year, multi-year strategic partnerships that go across the canvas of you know, all of Google. And you know, those are the really exciting scaled partnerships. But uh, you know, to your point, you can't just take SRE from Google and apply it to company X, but you can take things like error budgets or how we think about the principles of SRE, and you can apply them over the course of developing technology, collaborating, and innovating together. Yeah, and I think cloud native is going to be a key thing. And yeah, I think one, I mean, it's just my opinion, but I think one of those situations where the better mousetrap will win, if you're cloud native and you have APIs and you have the kind of services, people will, will, will beat it to your doorstep. So I got to ask you with Thomas Curry on board, obviously we've been following his career as well at Oracle. Uh, he knows what he's doing, comes into uh, Google, it's being built out, it's like a rocket ship at this point. What bet is he making? And what bet are you guys making on behalf of your customers? What's the, if you had to boil it down to Google Cloud's big bet, what is the bet on the technology side and what's the bet on the business side? Sure, well, I've already mentioned, you know, I've already hinted at, you know, the big strategy that Thomas has brought in. And, you know, that is the, that's again, those three pillars making sure that we show up and that we're present by having a scaled customer facing organization. Again, making sure that we transition from, you know, a, a typical support mindset into more of a customer experience mindset, and then making sure that those solutions are tailored and available for our priority industries. If I was to add, you know, more color to that, I think one of the most important changes that Thomas has personally been driving as has been converting us to a partner-led business and a partner-led organization. Um, and this means a lot of investments in large global systems integrators like Accenture and Deloitte. Uh, but this also means that uh, like the Splunk announcement from yesterday, that isn't just a sell two, this is a partnership that goes deep across go to market product um, and sell two. And then we also bring in very specific partners like uh, Temenos in Europe for financial services or a SEDA or a rack space for migrations. And as a result, I mean, the already we're seeing really incredible uh, lifts. So for example, nearly 200% year over year increase in partner influenced revenue in Google Cloud and almost like a 13X year over year increase in new customers won by partners. That's the kind of engine that builds a, a real hyperscale business. Interesting, you mentioned uh, Splunk, I want to get that in a second, but I also noticed there was a deal with Talus Group on eSIM subscriptions, which kind of leads me into the edge piece. There's a real edge component here with Google Cloud. And I think I had a conversation with Jennifer Lynn a few years ago, really digging into the built-in security and the value of the Google network. I mean, a lot of the scuttlebutt around the valley and in the industry is, you know, Google's got an amazing network. Um, Store, uh, you know, software defined networking is going to be a hot program programmable area. So you got programmable networking and you got edge and edge security. These are killer areas that need innovation. Could you comment on what you guys are doing there? And do you agree? I'm obviously uh, with, I'm 
you have a killer network and you're leveraging it. What's the, can you just give some insight into what's going on in those, those two areas, network and then the edge? Yeah, I think what you're seeing is the manifestation of, an, of the progression of cloud generally. And what do I mean by that? You know, it started out as like, get everything to the data center, you know, um, we kind of had this thought that maybe we could take all the workloads and we could get them to these centralized hubs and they, we could redistribute out the results and you know drive the latency down over time so we could span the portfolio of applications and services that would be cloud relevant over time. And what we've seen over the last decade really in cloud is an evolution to more of a layered architecture. And that layered architecture includes, you know, kind of core data centers, it includes CDN capacity, points of presence, it includes edge uh, and just in that list of customers over the last year, I, I mentioned there were at least three or four telcos in there. And you've also probably heard and seen quite a bit of uh, telco momentum coming from us in recent announcements. I think that's an indication that a lot of us are thinking about how can we take, take technology like Anthos, for example, and how could we orchestrate uh, workloads, create a common control plane, you know, manage services, across those kind of three shells, if you will, of the architecture. And that's a that's a very uh, strategic and important area for us. And I think generally for the cloud industry um, is, you know, is expanding beyond the data center as the place where everything happens. And you can look at, you know, Google Fi, you can look at Stadia, you can look at examples within Google that go well beyond cloud as to how we think about uh, you know, new ways to leverage that kind of three-tiered all right, so we saw some earnings come out on Amazon side as Google, both groups and Microsoft, well, all three clouds are crushing it on the cloud side. That's a tailwind, I get that. But as it continues, we're expecting post COVID some you know, redistribution of development dollars and projects, whether it's IT going cloud native or whatever new workloads. Uh, we, we are predicting a Cambrian explosion of new things from core to edge. Um, and this is going to create some lift. So I want to get your thoughts on uh, you guys strategy with go to market as well as your customers as they now have the ability to build workloads and apps with AI and data. There seems to be a trend towards the verticalization of whether it's sales and go to market and or specialism because you have horizontal scalability with cloud and you now have data that has distinct value in these verticals. So it really seems to be uh, a, uh, I won't say ratification, but in a way that seems to be the norm, whether you come into a market and you have specialization, but the data is there. So apps can be more agile. Do you, are you guys seeing that? And uh, is that something that you guys are considering from an from a organization standpoint? And how do customers think about targeting vertical industries and their customers? Yeah, I, I bring this to, and, and where you uh, started going there at the end of the question is exactly the way that we think about it as well, which is, uh, We've moved from, you know, here are storage offers for everybody and here's, you know, basic infrastructure to everybody. And now we've said, how can we make sure that we have solutions that are tailored to very specific problems that customers are trying to solve? And we're getting to the point now where, you know, performance and variety of technologies are available to be able to compose very specific solutions. And if you think about the substrate that has to be there, you know, we mentioned, you know, you have to have some really great partners and you have to have you know, a roadmap that is focused on priority solution areas. So for example, at Google Cloud, you know, we're very focused on six priority um, vertical areas. So, you know, retail, financial services, healthcare, manufacturing and industrials, um, healthcare life sciences, public sector. And, you know, as a result of being very focused in those areas, we can make more target investments and also align our entire go-to-market system and our entire partner Ecosystem, uh, excuse me, ecosystem around those uh, very specific priority areas. So, for example, we work with SEDA and HCA Healthcare uh, very recently to develop and maintain a national response portal um, for COVID 19, and that's to help better inform communities and hospitals. We can use Looker um, to help with uh, like a Commonwealth Care Alliance uh, nonprofit, and that helps monitor patient system uh, symptoms and risk factors. So. You know, we're using, you know, a very specific focus in healthcare and a partner ecosystem to, you know, develop very tailored solutions. Um, you know, you can also look at, I mentioned Shopify earlier, 
that's another great example of how in retail, they can use something like Google Meet, inherent reliability, scalability, security to connect their employees during these interesting times. Uh, but then they can also use GCP, a Google Cloud Platform to scale out. And as they come up with new apps and experiences for their shoppers, for their shops, you know, they can rapidly deploy to your point and those, you know, those solutions and, you know, how the database performs and how those tiers perform, you know, it's a very tight knit yeah. feedback loop with our engineering teams. Yeah. One of the things I'm seeing obviously with the virtualization of the COVID is that, you know, when the world gets back to normal, it'll be a hybrid. And it'll be a hybrid between reality, not physical and 100% virtual hybrid. And that's going to impact events to media to everything. Every vertical will be impacted. Um, and I want to point out the Splunk deal and bring that back in because I want you to comment on the relevance of the Splunk deal. And in context to Splunk has a cloud and they got a great slogan, data for every, everywhere, everywhere, data to everywhere, I think it is. Um, but the cube, we have a cloud. Um, Every company will have a cloud scale at some level will progress to having some sort of cloud because they have data. How are you guys powering those clouds? Because I think the Splunk deal is interesting. Their partner, their stock price was up on the news of the deal. A uh, nice bump there for Splunk, shout out to those guys. But they're a data company and now they're cross platform, but they're not Google, but they have a cloud. So, you know what I'm saying? So they need to play in all the clouds, but they need infrastructure, they need support. So how do you guys talk to that customer that says, hey, the next pandemic that comes, the next crisis that's going to cause some either social disruption or workflow disruption or work supply chain disruption. I need to be agile. I need to have full cloud scale. And so I need to talk to Google. What do you say to them? What's the pitch? And is, does this Splunk deal sim mirror some of those capabilities or uh, tie that together for us, the Splunk deal and how it relates to sure. companies so for and example, cloud proof themselves for the future. Sorry, for, um, for example, with the Splunk cloud deal, uh, if you take a look at what Google's already really good at, data processing at scale, log analytics, and you take a look at what uh, Splunk is doing you know, with their events and security incident monitoring and the rest, it's a really great mashup because they see by platforming on Google Cloud not only do they get highly performant infrastructure, but they also get the opportunity to leverage data tools, data analytics tools, machine learning and AI. They can help them provide enhanced services. So not just about capacity going up and down through periods of demand, but also enhancing services and continuing to offer more value to their customers. And we see that, uh, you know, as a really big trend. And, you know, this gets at something, you know, John, a little bit uh, bigger, which is, you know, kind of the two views of the world. And uh, we talked about very you know, tailored focused solutions. Splunk is an example of taking a very methodical approach to a partnership, developing a solution specifically, uh, you know, with partners and, uh, you know, in this case, Splunk on the security event management side. Um, but we're always going to provide our data processing platform, our infrastructure uh, for companies across many different industries. And I think that addresses one part of you know, the, the topic, which is, you know, how do we make sure that in periods of demand rapidly changing, this goes back to the foundational elements of like I, infrastructure as a service and elasticity. And you know, we're going to provide a platform and infrastructure that can help companies move through periods of, you know, it's hard to forecast and or demand may rise and fall, um, you know, in very interesting ways. But then there's going to be times where, um, you know, we, we, because they're not a, a you know, necessarily a focused use case um, where it may just be generalized platform versus a focused solution. So for example, like um, in the oil and gas industry, uh, we don't develop uh, custom AI ML solutions to facilitate upstream extraction, for example. Um, but what we do do is work with renewable energy companies to figure out how they might be able to leverage some of our uh, AI machine learning algorithms from our own data centers uh, to make their operations more efficient and, and to help uh, those renewable energy companies learn from what we've learned building out uh, you know, what I consider to be a world leading renewable energy uh, strategy and infrastructure. So classic enablement model where you're enabling your platform for your customers. Okay, so I got to ask the question, I asked this to the Microsoft guys as well, because Amazon 
you know, has their own SaaS stuff, but, it, but really more of end-to-end, -end. the better products are usually on the ecosystem side. You guys have some killer SaaS, G, G Suite, we're a customer. We use the G Suite really uh, deeply. We also use some big table as well. Um, I want to build a cloud. We have a cloud, Cube Cloud, but you guys have Meet. So I want to build my product on Google Cloud. How do I know you're not going to compete with me? Do you guys have those conversations around the trade-off between you know, the pure Google services which provide great value for the areas where the ecosystem needs to develop those new areas that are going to be great markets, uh, potentially huge markets um, that are out there? Well, this is the power of partnership. You know, I mentioned earlier that one of the really big moves that Thomas has made has been developing a sense of partners. And it kind of blurs the line between traditional, what you would call a customer and what you would call a partner. And so having a really strong sense of which industries we're in, which we've prioritized, plus having a really strong sense of where we want to add value and where uh, you know, our customers and partners want to add that value, uh, that's, that's the foundational, that's the beginning of that conversation that you just mentioned. And it's uh, important that we have an ability to engage not just in a, you know, here's the cloud infrastructure piece of the puzzle, but one of the things Thomas has also done and a key strategy of his has been to make sure that, uh, you know, the Google Cloud relationship is also a way to access all amazing innovation happening across all of Google and also help bring a strategic conversation in that includes multiple properties from across Google so that an HSBC and Google can have a conversation about how to move forward together that is comprehensive rather than you know, having to uh, wonder and have that uncertainty sit behind the projects that we're trying to get out and have high velocity on because they offer so much to retail bank, yeah. for example. Well, I got a couple more questions and then, I, and then I'll let you go. I know you got some other things going on. I really appreciate you taking the time, sharing this great insight and updates. Um, as a builder, you've been on the other side of the table. Now you're at Google heading up the CTO, I was working with uh, Thomas, understanding the go to market across the board and the product mix. As you talk to customers and they're thinking, um, the good customers are thinking, hey, you know, I want to come out of this COVID on an upward trajectory and I want to use this opportunity to reset and realign for the future. What advice do you have for those enterprises? They could be small, medium sized enterprises to the full large big guys. And obviously cloud native, we talked some of that already, but what advice would you have for them as they start to really prioritize as some things are now exposed, the collaboration, the tooling, the scale, all these things are out there. What have you seen and what advice would you give um, a CXO or CISO or a leader in the industry to think about and how they should come out of this thing, how they should plan, execute and move forward? Well, I appreciate the question because this is the crux of uh, most of my day job, which is interacting with the C-suite and boards of you know companies and partners around the world, and they're obviously very interested to learn uh, or you know get a data point from someone at Google. And uh, the the advice generally goes in a couple of different directions. Uh, one, collaboration is part of the secret sauce that makes Google what it is, and I think you're seeing this right now across every industry and, and it, you know, whether you're a small, medium-sized business or you're a large company, you know, the ability to connect people with each other, to collaborate in very meaningful ways, to share information rapidly, um, to do it securely with high reliability, that, that's the foundation that enables all of the projects that you might choose to, you know, applications to build, services to enable, um, to actually succeed in production and over the long haul, right? Is that culture of innovation and collaboration. So absolutely number one is you know, having a really strong sense of what they want to achieve from a culture perspective, a collaboration perspective, and the and the people, because that's the thing that fuels everything else. Um, second piece of you know advice, especially in these times where there's so much uncertainty, is where can you um, buy down uncertainty with bets that aren't, you know, that aren't you? You can you can learn without a high penalty, and this is a this is why cloud I think is really really you know finding uh, you know super scale. It was it was already on the rise, but what you're seeing now and you know as you've played back uh, to me during this conversation, uh, we're seeing the same thing, which is a, a high increase in demand of let's get this implemented now. How can we do this more? This is you know clearly one way to move through uncertainty, and so. 
look for those um, opportunities. I'll, I'll give you a really good example. Mainframes, <laughs> right? one of the classic workloads of the you know on-premise enterprise, and you know there's all sorts of uh, there are all sorts of uh, potential magic solves for getting mainframes to the cloud and uh, getting out of mainframes. But a practical consideration might be maybe you just front end it with some Java, or maybe you uh, just get closer to other data centers within a certain amount of milliseconds that's required to have a performant workload. Maybe you start chunking it apart and uh, treat the workload a little bit differently rather than you know just one thing. But there are a lot of years and investments in a workload that might run on a mainframe. And that's a perfect example of how you know, biting off too much yeah. might be a little bit dangerous, but there is a path uh, to, and so for example, like we brought in a company called Cornerstone to help with those migrations. Um, but we also have, you know, partnerships with, you know, data center providers and others globally, plus our own uh, built infrastructure to allow even, uh, you know, a smaller step per se for more like uh, close proximity location of the workload. It's great. You know, everything has a technical um, metaphor connection these days when you have a internet digitally connected world where we're living in, you know, the notion of a digital business was a research buzzword that's been kicked around for years. Um, but I think now COVID-19, you're seeing the virtual or digital, it's really digital, but you know, virtual reality, augmented reality is going to come fast too. Um, really get people to go, wow, virtual virtualization of my business. So, you know, we've been kind of kicking around this term business virtualization, just almost as a joke, but it's really more about okay, this is about a new world, new opportunity to think about when we come out of this, we're going to still go back to our physical world. Now the hybrid now kicks in. This kind of connects all aspects of business in every vertical. It's not like, hey, I'm targeting like this, this industry. So there might be unique solutions in those industries, but now the world is virtualized. It's connected. It's a digital environment. These are huge concepts that I think has kind of been a fringe a uh, lunatic fringe idea, but now it's brought mainstream. This is going to be a huge tailwind for you guys, as well as developers and entrepreneurs and app application software. This is going to be, we think, a big thing. What's your reaction to that? What's your, based on your experience, what do you see happening? Do you agree with it? And do you have anything um, you might want to add to that? Well, uh, maybe, you know, one kind of philosophical statement and then one more, uh, you know, I bruised my shins a lot uh, in this world and uh, maybe share some of the black and blue coloration. Um, first, from a philosophical standpoint, the greater the crisis, the more open-minded people become and the more creative people get. And so I'm really excited about the creativity that I'm seeing, you know, with all of the customers that I work with directly, plus our partners, you know, Googlers, everybody's rallying together to think about this world differently. And so to your point, you know, a shift in mindset, you know, there are, there are very few moments where you get this uh, pronounced a change and everyone is going through it all at the same time. So that creates a, a you know, an opportunity, a scenario where, you know, bold thinking, new strategies, creativity, uh, you know, bringing people in, uh, in new ways, collaborating in new ways, can offer a lot of benefits. Um, more, you know, practically speaking, and you know, from my experience, you know, building technology for a couple of decades, uh, you know, this is a it has an interesting parallel to, you know, building like tightly coupled, really large, maybe monoliths versus microservices, and the debate around, you know, do we build small things that can be reconfigured uh, and you know built out by others or or built upon by others uh, more easily, or do we create a golden path and a more understood you know development environment? And I'm not here to answer the question of which one's better because that's a, still a raging debate. <laughs> but I can tell you that uh, the process of going through and taking a service or an application or a thing that we want to deliver to a customer that one of our customers wants to deliver to their customer and thinking about it so comprehensively that you're able to think about it in its what it's, or its core functions and then thinking methodically about how to enable those core functions um that is a you know that's a real opportunity and i think technology to your point is getting to the place where you know if you want to run across multiple clouds you know this is the anthos conversation yeah. um where you know recently ga'd you know a, a 
global scale platform, uh, you know, multi-cloud platform, that's a pretty big moment yeah. in technology. And that opens up the aperture to think differently about architectures and that process of taking, you know, an application service and making it real. Well, I think you're right on the money. I think philosophically it's a flashpoint opportunity. I think that's going to prove to be accelerating. You're going to see people win faster and lose faster. You're going to see that quickly happen. But to your point about the monolith versus you know, service or decoupled based systems, I think we now live in a world where it's a systems view now. You can have a monolith combined with decoupled systems. That's distributed computing. I think this is the, the, the trend. It's a system. It's not one thing or the other. So I think the debate will continue just like you know, VI versus Emacs. We don't, we don't know, right? So you know, people are going to have the debate, but it's a, if you think about it as a system, the use case defines the architecture. That's the beautiful thing about the cloud. So great insight. I really appreciate it. And um, how's everything going over there at Google Cloud? Um, you got Meet that's available. How's your staff? What's it like inside the Googleplex and the Google Cloud team? Tell us what's going on over there. People still working, working remote. Uh, <laughs> How's everyone doing? Well, as you can as you can tell from my uh, scenario here, my my backdrop, yes, uh, still hard at work, and we take this as a huge responsibility. You know, these moments is a huge responsibility because there are uh, you know educators, loved ones, medical professionals, you know, critical life services that uh, run on services that Google provides, and so I can tell you were uh, humbled by the opportunity to provide, you know, the backbone and the platform and the people and the curiosity and the um, sincere desire to help. And I mentioned a couple of ways already just in this conversation where we've been able to leverage some of our investment in technology to help form people that really gets at the root of who we are. So while we, just like any other humans, are going through a process of understanding our new reality. What really um, fires us up and what really charges us up is because uh, is that this is a moment where what we do really well is very, very important um, to the world in every geo, in every vertical, in every use case, in every solution type. Um, so we're just take we're taking that responsibility very seriously, and. Uh, at the same time, we're trying to make sure that, you know, all of our teams, as well as all of the teams that we work with and our customers and partners are making it through the human moment, not just the technology moment. Well, congratulations and thanks for spending the time. Great insight, Will. Appreciate it. Will Granis, Managing Director, Head of Technology Office of the CTO at Google Cloud. This certainly brings to the mainstream what we've been in the industry, um, been into for a long time, which is DevOps, large scale, role of data and technology. Now we think it's going to be even more acute around societal benefits. And thank God we have all those services for the frontline workers. So thank you so much for all that effort. And thanks for spending the time here in the CUBE conversation. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, John. Okay, I'm John Furrier here in the Palo Alto studios for a remote CUBE conversation uh, with Google Cloud, getting the update, really looking at the future. As it unfolds, we are going to see this moment in time as an opportunity to move to the next level cloud native and change not only the tech industry, but society. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.